Good morning all. Um, I haven't slept very well the last couple of nights because I've been trying to think how am I going to drive NeoPixels from a PIC microcontroller because when I start my series of PIC microcontroller tutorials I want the sort of end game to be driving NeoPixels with one of these and uh, it's kept me awake at night. You see, the problem with NeoPixels, or to give them their proper name, the WS2812B, is this thing here, it's the timing diagrams. Now, if you look at uh, these four times in this table up here, this one here, the top one, is very, very short, 0.4 microseconds. That's 400 nanoseconds. That's not a very long period of time. And what I've been trying to work out is if I set a GPIO bit, and then immediately clear it as the very next instruction, is that going to be able to generate a pulse short enough to adhere to those timings in the uh, NeoPixel datasheet? Well, you'd think so, because this PIC microcontroller has an internal 4 MHz clock. So if you execute one instruction and then immediately execute another one, where the first one takes the line high and the second one takes it low, they should be, well, 250 nanoseconds apart. So let's plug in the PIC kit, program this chip, and take a look at what's happening on the scope. So let's plug this in. Uh, let's put power on. Now I'll download that program, and then with a couple of uh, flying leads, I'll hook up the scope and we'll see what's happening. So project uh, quick build. Is the output so that succeeded uh, I'm plugged in so let's program the chip see whether that works successfully yes well that says it's worked fine let's see what we're getting so if I connect the uh, scope to uh, ground and GPIO 2 let's see what we've got and uh, this is the result. Um, this is where I set the GPIO bit, and this is where I clear it. And you can see from the uh, time base, which is one microsecond per division, it's taking almost a full microsecond to go high and then go low again. Now that should be much shorter than that. That's no good for the NeoPixel. So why is it taking a microsecond when it should take 250 nanoseconds? Well, here's a clue. DC 0 to 20 megahertz. You can run this chip at up to 20 megahertz with a crystal oscillator. If you do, you get a 200 nanoseconds instruction cycle. So the time between one instruction and the next is 200 nanoseconds. The problem is I'm using a 4 megahertz internal oscillator, uh, factory calibrated to plus or minus 1%. That's a five times slower than the maximum speed this chip will run at. So my instruction cycle is going to be five times longer than 200 nanoseconds. That's one microsecond, and that's what I'm getting. And that's no good for the NeoPixel. Or is it? Just take a look at this waveform again. We've got one microsecond of high and about two and a half microseconds of low. Now this is where I do a go-to. I set the bit high, I set the bit low. And then I go to the beginning of the loop and it actually takes that long to go back to the beginning of the loop and execute the loop again. But uh, let's just plug in a NeoPixel into the output of this and see what happens. Right, so I've put a little uh, pin header on my NeoPixel and I've got some cables here. So I'm going to need some ground. Well, there's ground there. I'm going to need some VCC, which is actually over there. Nothing's happened on the NeoPixel yet. Now let me just take out that which goes to the scope and put my NeoPixel's data line onto this GP2 output and see what happens. Absolutely nothing. Well, absolutely nothing that is until I press reset. And then the NeoPixel lights up. Now I'm not gonna leave it on for too long because it's actually drawing all that current through my PicKit 2 programmer and that is uh, ultimately coming from my PC's USB port so I'm not quite sure what the current loading of all that is but that's interesting with that 
data stream with that um, well it's not quite a square wave but with that uh, waveform going down the signal line the NeoPixel actually lights up. Let's try it again. That's the NeoPixel powered up. Press reset and it all lights up. So what's going on? Well just look at this waveform again a minute. We've got a microsecond of high and two and a half microseconds of low. Let's have another look at the data sheet. I mean it looks a bit like the zero code. A short bit of high and a long bit of low. But actually it's not. It's a one code because the high was sufficiently long, uh, in my case it's one microsecond, that it looks like the high part of a one code. Now strangely enough on these uh, NeoPixels the timing for the low part of these codes is fairly irrelevant as long as it's less than five microseconds. Um, it can be much much longer than this table which is up here actually makes out these low codes uh, L and L 0.85 and 0.45 can be much much longer than those. So what my PIC microcontroller is actually putting out is a one code and it spews out eight ones for green and eight ones for red and eight ones for blue and then on and on and on again hundreds of thousands of them until I reset the CPU and when I did that, the output of GP2 goes low for this long period of time. And uh, the WS2812 interprets that as meaning that's all your data, latch it all in and let's see the result. And we see that every single NeoPixel comes on. So this waveform, despite it looking like the, uh, the zero code, the off code, is actually working as an on code because we've got a long high and then the low, as I say, is fairly irrelevant. And the upshot of this is that it's actually very easy to turn a set of NeoPixels on. You can pretty much just shove a square wave into them. That must have glitched a bit because it must have seen a reset pulse as well because I didn't have to press that. But you can pretty much shove a square wave into them and they light up. The problem is it's quite difficult turning them back off again. And that's because the zero code, the off code, has this very short high pulse. Now this is so short that I can't actually generate it using this PIC microcontroller running its internal 4 MHz clock. Because even if I have the shortest bit of code, set the bit high, set the bit low and loop round, that results in a high time that's too long. One microsecond, it's too long. The NeoPixel is seeing that as an on code, not an off code. So what am I going to do? Uh, panic? Yeah. Uh, lose sleep? Uh, very definitely. Or use a faster clock. How about a crystal clock? Now this one is 16 megahertz. I've got the crystal there, a couple of uh, load capacitors which go down to ground. If I shove that on my board, now it's not set up to use it yet, but I can easily do that. That's where it goes. Uh, crystal across GP4 and 5 load capacitors to ground, change my software and things will look very different. So it's going to be exactly the same code, set the bit high, set the bit low, loop round, but I want a different uh, clock oscillator. I don't want the internal RC oscillator. I actually want, uh, what is it, fosc underscore hs. So let's type that in. Oh, it's all of that, isn't it? Um, F OSC underscore HS. So that means crystal oscillator high speed. Okay. So let's uh, quick build that. That's okay. Let's program that. And that's programmed. Yes, that's better. The whole thing's running a lot faster now. It's running at 16 megahertz instead of 4 megahertz. So now my turn on the port and turn it off again is all happening within well a quarter of a microsecond, so that's 250 nanoseconds. That now satisfies the um, the uh, high time for a turn off for a logic zero and then the low time as I say doesn't really matter. Well that's taking place in 750 nanoseconds 
That, I think, is the solution. And uh, to cut a long story short, that is the solution because here I have my first PIC microcontroller flashing NeoPixel project. Now, the code has grown a little bit, but uh, if you look at this, this is the setup and loop. And if you think of this sort of Arduino style, all I'm doing in setup is making all the uh, GPIO ports outputs. And then in loop, I call led on, that's a subroutine, call delay, uh, which is a quarter of a second or something, call led off and call delay and then loop round. And it works. So the way this works, and this is at the new faster 16 megahertz crystal uh, clock speed, is that when you call led on, uh, 18 is put into the counter. Now 18 is hexadecimal, so that's actually 24 decimal. Set the port high and then stuff in a few no operations just to pad that out a bit. This is remember is the long high time to turn the LED on and then go around and do that 24 times. Led off does exactly the same, but it doesn't stuff anything between the GPIO being turned on and the GPI being turned off. So this is now the much shorter 250 nanosecond pulse, which is required to turn a NeoPixel off. Delay then is just a whole load of nested loops. So it counts to 10 million or something um, so that it's all slow enough that we can see it. Now, why am I sending out 24 bits? Well, because you have to send out 24 bits and they are uh, eight bits for green, eight bits for red and eight bits for blue because you have to specify the precise color you want. At the moment, all of these 24 bits in my code are either ones or zeros. So I'm turning on all the colors at full brightness and then turning them all off. And with a few little tweakettes to the code, I can flash the LED in green or red or blue. And with another couple of tweakettes, I can flash uh, more than one LED in lots of different colors. Yay! Now, to achieve that, you do have to do some pretty horrible things like, uh, how many calls have I got here? About 16. Um, but it does show what's possible. And uh, so the big finale of my uh, PIC programming tutorials is on. The uh, compromise I've had to make, of course, is that I've had to go to a 16 megahertz crystal clock to get this chip running fast enough to send the off codes. You can easily send the on codes, you just can't send the off codes. So if you are thinking of following along uh, with this tutorial, now might be a good time to uh, get some crystals, 16 megahertz is a good bet, and uh, some load capacitors. These are 22 puff, I think. So uh, hopefully I'm going to sleep a bit better tonight. So, on with the robot build. Right, these bits need to come out of uh, their plastic frames and uh, these bits as well. Uh, in the meantime, if you liked this video, then uh, there are a couple more up here which you may enjoy. If you want to subscribe to this channel, then touch my face. And uh, the link on this side is for Patreon if you want to make donations to this channel. Uh, if you liked the video or disliked it, the like and dislike buttons are down the bottom. Cheerio!